Hello everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make the most of your Coven Throne by using the leftover parts to kitbash a whole separate Mortis engine. I've been collecting a fair few Nighthaunt models from the Mortal Realms magazine, which I'm not using, and I think I found a good way to put them to use. But first, let me show you what I did for the bases. I used a 120 by 92 mm oval base to map out cardboard for my melee put and squished it around the cardboard and on top. Then I took my Green Stuff World rolling pin and used the brick design, wet it with a bit of water and rolled it across. I just checked my cardboard base next to the original plastic one to make sure it was the right size, trimmed any excess milliput and then whacked my coven throne on top. As you can see, this is what the unaltered coven throne looks like. I'm going to keep some parts separate for now so they're easier to paint and it's going to help me replicate a similar structure after my other miscellaneous models. So let's take a look at the leftovers. We've got a skeleton caged throne looking bit, our necromancer looking dude, a pillar and an altar, and three ghost banshees. Of course, I'm going to need a bit more than that to make a mortis engine, so I'll be using a core of black knights and a dreadblade harrow as my trusty steeds to hold up my altar piece. I balanced the five models together, making sure they all fit onto the oval base, and set them aside. I want to be totally sure that they'll support the altar before gluing them down. I'm building a base for the altar with cardboard and milliput, so that the cage, altar and necromancer all fit together. The necromancer is sculpted to fit onto steps, so I'm going to attach some more cardboard with my hot glue gun and build a basic structure for him to sit on. I squished some milliput over the cardboard and rolled my brick rolling pin over the surface to give it some texture. So now I've got the altar section ready, I'm going back to my base and securing my horsemen, always checking that they'll support the rest of the structure while I'm positioning them. While it would be great to be able to paint these bits individually, it's hard enough to get them to hold as it is. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to be gluing lots of additional models to this basic structure and kind of feeling my way around which parts seem secure enough to hold the extra weight. I want to give my kit bash the same grandeur and height as the original model, so I'm comparing it to the coven throne as I'm placing my models. In the end, I used a Mirmorn Banshee, some Grim Grass Reapers, the Dreadscythe Harridans that come with Lady Alinda, and some bats from Curse City. I bet you want to see what this concoction looks like with some paint, so let's get started. I sprayed the whole model black and then gave it a highlight with a few layers of white, spraying mainly from above. Already this piece looks much more cohesive, even like it could be a Games Workshop design. So let's move on to adding some colour. I mixed my own red for this model, using Liquitex Alizarin Crimson Acrylic <laughs> and matte medium. I wanted to experiment with this acrylic because I really like the colour, but to be honest I wouldn't bother using it for an airbrush mix, unless you want something really translucent. It's not pigmented enough to be thinned down for use with an airbrush, so I ended up adding some Vallejo Bloody Red game colour into the mix afterwards, just to give it a bit more colour. I'm focusing on the parts in the model which I ultimately want to end up red, like the cloaks of the banshees, but I'm allowing the red to diffuse over the rest of the model. This is going to give the rest of the model warm bloody undertones and make the flesh colours look more horrific. I'm going to be sticking to red, white and black for the whole model to give it a classic horror vibe. I'm going over the capes with the same red mixture with a brush to make these areas more vibrant. For my black areas, I'll be using Army Painter Speed Paint. It's well suited to my watercolory style of painting because its translucency is going to allow me to build up softer layers rather than a completely opaque black like Vallejo Game Color. I'm brushing on layers of water like you would a canvas and allowing my paint to spread naturally into the cracks of the model. It's a really simple and effective way of bringing out the detail in your sculpt and I love the softness of the shadows it creates. So I've been over the whole model and I'm happy with the depth in the shadows, but now we need to bring out our highlights again and bring the contrast back into the model. I'm taking my cheap makeup brush, for eyeshadow to be specific, and dry brushing over the whole model with dead white game colour. 
So the model is looking nice and even in contrast now, but I'm going back in with a dead white and a small brush to target a few detail highlight areas. The black and white have just taken off some of the vibrancy, so I'm going back over the red areas with a final wash of the base red mix. Then, here comes the fun part, slapping on some vibrant blood. I'm using pure bloody red Vallejo game colour for this, which is brighter than my red base, and it's really going to pull attention to the gory details. I'm using my same watercolour technique of dabbing areas with water before dotting my blood red colour on top and letting it bleed naturally. Just a tad bit more highlighting and some flicking of the blood red mixed with water for some dynamic blood splashes. And here we have it, our spooky kit bash of a mortise engine or coven throne, whichever you choose, from the leftovers of our other kit. I do think this model is absolutely perfect for kit bashing because the original design is already a basic structure with a bunch of random ghouls swirling around it. Even though these models are Nighthorn, they don't look out of place here at all. I could imagine flesh eater courts creeping around it as well. So what do you think? Will you be making your own mortise engine? And if so, let me know in the comments below which models you're thinking of using. Don't forget to give me a like if you like this video and subscribe for more kit bashing and spooky content. Until next time, happy Halloween! See you then!